guests in partnership with Brandalized to create a special capsule collection with graffiti by Banksy. Banksy responded, Attention all shoplifters, please go to guests on Regent Street. They've helped themselves to my artwork without asking, how can it be wrong for you to do the same to their clothes? Guess store forced to close in London after Banksy encourages shoplifters to help themselves. For the fall-winter 2022 season, Guess is excited to announce a brand new capsule collection inspired by Banksy's graffiti, created in partnership with Brandalized, an urban graffiti license whose mission is to offer Banksy fans affordable graffiti collectibles. This new capsule features contemporary garments for Guess men, women, and children, along with unique accessories. Using iconic motifs from Banksy's graffiti, this collection combines the artist's graffiti with guest attitude in tees, sweatshirts, and coats for men, alongside cute cropped sweats and fitted tees for women. The graffiti of Banksy has had a phenomenal influence that resonates throughout popular culture, says Paul Marciano, chief creative officer of Guess? Question mark. The Guess and Brandalized Project capsule priced from 40 euros to 270 euros for tops, bottoms, dresses, denims, socks, and hats will be available on Guess.eu by the end of October and in store by mid-November. And then you can see if I, I'll try to zoom in here for you. You can see the infamous Banksy graffiti artwork in the background of the man throwing the flowers. It's the protester who would normally be throwing something like a rock or tear gas or something, and instead he's throwing flowers. It's a very famous piece by Banksy, and it's in the Guess X brandalized display at the Guess store, I think, in London. And it even says, with graffiti by Banksy. So <laughs> what? how badly do you have to screw up to put out an entire clothing collection and marketing display and everything? and you didn't have permission to do it? Well, let's take a look at what the article has to say, see if there's more to this, and then I'll sort of make a legal analysis of it. Because the short version of the legal analysis is that if you don't have permission, then, then yeah, this is copyright infringement, probably trademark infringement if Banksy enforces his trademarks, but definitely some kind of copyright infringement. These are Banksy pieces, and you don't have permission or authorization to use them, or license to use them, then yeah, you're automatically going to be in the wrong. There's really no fair use in putting someone's artwork on your clothing line and then selling it. That's not a thing. See the Aaron Carter, may he rest in peace, a uh, situation from a year or two ago where he wanted to use the Two Wolves artwork from another artist without permission and got into a whole legal battle and ended up having to pay for that. And unfortunately, that seemed to be part of his decline, unfortunately. Brandalized responded by quoting Banksy, but crossing out the word advertisement and adding the word graffiti, saying any graffiti instead of any advertisement, any graffiti in a public space that gives you no choice whether you see it or not is yours. It belongs to you. It's yours to take, rearrange, and reuse. Asking for permission is like asking to keep a rock someone just threw at your head. Which is an interesting comeback, because if Brandalized had to defend this in court, that might be an exhibit. That might be a piece of evidence. They might say, as an affirmative defense, yes, I copied Banksy's graffiti artwork, but he told me to. He said I could. He said any advertisement in a public space that gives you no choice whether you see it or not is yours. So wouldn't the graffiti in a public space that gives you no choice whether you see it or not be yours? It belongs to you. Take it. Rearrange it. Reuse it. Don't ask for permission. That would be like asking to keep a rock someone just threw at your head. I get it. I get it. Brandalize is going to come back and say that they have some kind of implied license. Let's take a look at the rest of the article and see if there's anything we're missing. So MixMag.net here says Regent Street Store has launched a graffiti collection featuring iconic Banksy works, allegedly without the anonymous artist's permission. Guess flagship Regent Store recently launched a Guess X Brandalized project capsule in mid-November featuring some of his work on the clothing 
including the Flower Thrower, Balloon Girl, and Follow Your Dreams. However, the anonymous street artist has claimed that Guest did not ask for permission to use his works. After being called out, Guest closed their store temporarily, as well as covering up the window display at the front of the store and placed security outside. There's no pictures here of that. Some commentators suspect that Banksy's Instagram post criticizing guests may have been part of a guerrilla marketing campaign, which would fit the artist's unorthodox approach, but the named and shamed guest store didn't seem to be in on it. In response to the Instagram post, guests temporarily closed the Regent Street store to the public, covered the Banksy-themed window display, and even placed security outside. I don't know if that means, did they take the products off of sale, or are the products still for sale? Are they defending themselves legally, saying, yes, we can still sell this, we're just going to now defend ourselves from this call to shoplifting? Hey there, it's Leonard from the editing room. Viewer Catballs sent in the following link to pestcontrolofficecom slash use.asp, and it's a Banksy-style image of children playing with a copyright symbol. And it says, you are welcome to use Banksy's images for non-commercial, personal amusement. Print them out in a color that matches your curtains. Make a card for your gran. Submit them as your own homework. Whatever. But neither Banksy or Pest Control license the artist's images to third parties. Please do not use Banksy's images for any commercial purpose, including launching a range of merchandise or tricking people into thinking something is made or endorsed by the artist when it isn't. Saying, Banksy wrote copyright is for losers in his book, doesn't give you free reign to misrepresent the artist and commit fraud. We checked. And then at the bottom it says, legal words that have to appear at the bottom of a website. So I agree with that. That would affirmatively disclaim any other implied license that guests had some kind of permission to use Banksy's artwork on a line of clothing. So then what's my legal opinion here about what's going on? Or what's, what are the legal issues that I can spot in this scenario? Well, first, obviously Guess has some kind of potential liability if they did use Banksy's artwork on their clothing line and in their marketing without permission. If they think that they have some kind of implied license with this brandalized post here, yeah, I guess they could try to defend with that. and. That would be something worth considering. If I was if I was defending Brandalized in court, I would definitely bring this up as a potential affirmative defense. I'm not saying I would automatically win, but it does seem like a, a way of saying if it's in public, then you should be able to use it. If it's forced on you, then you should be able to use it. Therefore, if if Banksy's artwork is forced on you in the same way that an advertisement is forced on you, even Banksy has said it belongs to you, it's yours to take, rearrange, and reuse. I just don't see that as a super strong argument. It's not an express contract between the parties. So the most Brandalized can say is, Banksy has made this public statement before, and we relied on it. So it's some kind of justified reliance or affirmative defense maybe that limits damages or, or maybe you can claim innocent infringement and maybe the, the damages are limited here, but that, that would be it. I, I think you would still be liable for copyright infringement. You, you would still be infringing on the work if you used it for commercial purposes. You know, this, this statement wasn't necessarily an express license is what Banksy would say if Banksy took them to court. I don't, for the record, I don't think Banksy, just thinking about the anonymity and everything, I don't think Banksy's going to be the kind to take guests to court. Although there are ways they could. Banksy, whether it's a person or whether it's a collective or whatever, could go to court and say, I want to sue, but I need to sue under this pseudonym and not have my individual stakeholders identities revealed and the court would probably grant that and if the court wouldn't grant that then Banksy as the plaintiffs might might be able to get out of the thing by just voluntarily dismissing the case at that point saying hey I don't want to pursue this case if I can't be anonymous so I think you can get through a case with Banksy without revealing who Banksy is 
Although maybe the judge or the parties may eventually have to know, or maybe some attorney somewhere will know some opposing attorney. The other issue then is this call to shoplifting. Is Banksy wrong for telling people to go shoplift? Well, maybe. First, let's analyze it from a U.S. law perspective. But let's remember this is in London. This is not in the U.S. If Banksy had said, attention all shoplifters, go shoplift at this store, on social media in the U.S., there would be an argument that that is a a call to criminal activity. That is an intentional incitement to immediate criminal activity. But the immediate part is going to be key. The Brandenburg line, we've done a video on this before, the Brandenburg line is the line where the words become crimes. If I tell people there's a fire in a crowded theater and they all storm out creating a crush or a trample event and people die, uh, I've probably been guilty of some kind of, of crime. My First Amendment free speech rights are limited to not inciting imminent lawless action. Now, that imminent part is important. Telling someone, you know, let's meet up here and then everybody go do the crime is imminent. More imminent than, hey, everybody, you know, go to guess on Regent Street and shoplift. And then, like, if a mob doesn't show up more or less immediately and shoplift, then it's not a crime anymore. The the Brandenburg line has not been crossed because there's no longer any immediacy or imminency. So that's that's going to be a problem with any attempts to consider this a criminal act on Banksy's part. Now, in UK law, maybe this is different. US law is based on UK law, not not some other country's legal system. So I, it might be very similar that it's not a crime to tell people, you know, hey, guess wronged me, go wrong them back. Unless Banksy is in some way making this happen right away. The people are at the store and he's saying, hey, go get that clothing now, go steal that clothing now, help yourself to the clothing now. I, I don't I don't really see it as being a crime. Who even owns urban art if they bought it from the building owner? Uh, Sigan, okay, good question. So we had the situation with five points. I'll try to put a bubble. Um, the five points graffiti artists, their works were protected to the tune of many thousands of dollars in statutory damages each. I think I think the judge gave them 150,000 the maximum statutory damages each for their graffiti artwork on someone else's building. Now, it was there by permission. So that's different than some of Banksy's artwork. But Banksy would still own under US copyright law and under most Berne Convention copyright laws that I can think of, uh Banksy would own his graffiti artwork even if it was on a wall that's unauthorized. Maybe the unauthorized graffiti can be whitewashed or destroyed without any consequences, but he would still own the underlying artwork that he created. There's no there's no question in US copyright law. If you express uh, you know yourself in a tangible medium, you own a copyright to it. Uh, and then unless otherwise, like something else has to happen, it's automatically vested in you the moment you create it. But you can't commercialize art that isn't yours, can you? Well, we have to go through the individual steps. Why can't you commercialize art that isn't yours? It's because of copyright and trademark. Now, the artwork itself is not a trademark and not the way it's being used here. So I'm not worried about trademark, but they did use Banksy's name. That I am worried about with trademark. If he protects his name via trademark, which he does not have to, then that's a trademark infringement because it's literally saying this is this is by Banksy when it's it's not entirely by Banksy. It's using his artwork, but you know, so it's advertising eh, that's going to be trademark. But I'm more interested in the copyright issues here. And the question is whether you own or have a license to use the artwork. Whether you're commercializing it or not does affect a fair use inquiry, but this is not a fair use situation. 
They are not saying we have used his artwork to make commentary, criticism, etc. No, they're just selling his artwork on their clothing. That's not a fair use situation, not even in the ballpark. So we don't have to worry about whether it's commercial or not commercial, profit, not profit, whatever. Uh, what we do have to worry about is whether they had a license. If they needed a license and they don't have a license, then that's that's copyright infringement, open and shut. Um, if someone was inspired by Banksy and they created their own Banksy-like artwork, that would probably be acceptable. But if they had access to Banksy's artwork to be inspired by and then they made something substantially similar, that would violate U.S. copyright law. The message doesn't say anything about copying the graffiti, just rearranging it and reusing it. Uh, reusing it would be the argument I would use, that that language allows you to use it in any way you want. I'm looking at the brandalized website. Unless they're lying, they have the license to the art, so they can license to whoever. So they're claiming that they have a license. If that was true, then this is just guerrilla marketing, and we're all buying into it. We're all tricked by it. Or at least I am. I wouldn't argue he didn't tell people to shoplift, but told people who were planning to shoplift anyway. <laughs> Attention shoplifters, you're already shoplifters, so just go do more shoplifting. <laughs> That's a funny funny way of looking at it. That's a very uh, Samuel Alito way of, no, wait. Um, Scalia, thank you. Yes, that was Scalia. Banksy was deliberately likening public advertisement to an act of violence. Using that quote on Banksy's own art is pretty offensive. Shoplifting isn't violent. Yeah, all by itself, shoplifting isn't violent. It can become violent, of course. It can become very confrontational. Yeah, so final verdict is that the Banksy thing is very dramatic, but I doubt it's going to come to a legal scenario because it's either going to be worked out in the background or it already has been worked out in the background and it is part of some kind of guerrilla marketing. Or it's just simply a situation where Banksy's not going to pursue something in court because that's just not the way his art collective works. I do think that Guess would be wrong for using Banksy's artwork without permission. I do not think that Brandalized's response with Banksy's use advertisements any way you want to uh, is permission to use his artwork any way they want to. So this is either some clever guerrilla marketing or this really was accidental infringement. Um, my viewers are saying that Brandalize thinks they had permission, so we'll see what that's all about, maybe in some future video. Brandalized has a Banksy-attributed quote, it's a very frustrated feeling you get when the only people with good photos of your work are the police department. <laughs> Public advertisement is like throwing a brick at you, and that's why it's okay to use it. It's not a legal argument. Uh, you know, there's a, there is... There's a tool that we can use for this, hyperbole. I use the tool of hyperbole to find the limits of an argument. So if roadside advertisement is okay, but is starting to approach some kind of not okay, um, how about in-vehicle advertisements? If you were driving down the road and the, you know, the car's doing the driving on autopilot, so it, uh, you know, do 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 wakes you up and says, hey, everybody, you're about to pass Joe's Auto Mile. You come for a new car at Joe's Auto Mile. You know, and you don't have a choice about that because it's part of your subscription package for your automobile. Um, you know, well, that's definitely a level of offensive. OK, so how about if they start putting advertisements like in the night sky? Like, let's say that they put up like a satellite or something that has like a mylar sail that has... Uh, I don't know, lights or holes in it or something. It reflects the sun in a way that puts a giant advertisement for Coca-Cola in the night sky. You want to look up and see the Big Dipper? No, there's a Coca-Cola, you know, satellite sailing on by. Um, at what point are you allowed to say, no, this is enough and, and I'm allowed to become violent and militant against this? There, there would be a point where I would feel it was being forced on me. Yeah, I, I, I pass by an advertisement on the roadside. Okay, I'm not really on the road to, to you know, take in the roadside so much. But I, I do want to see the night sky and feel, you know, nice and connected to nature. 
synchronized drones in the pattern of brand logos is already a thing. Yes, that's very temporary and very local. A satellite would be much more regional, much more global even, um, and much more permanent. It might, if it's a low Earth orbit satellite, it would be passing through your vision, but it would be doing so regularly. So if there's a conclusion to be made out of this, I, I really don't know what it is. I guess is obviously doing something with Banksy's artwork. It's obviously going to get them a lot of attention. There's no way they didn't know that something was going to happen. This has to have been planned through Banksy or has to have been accounted for by someone at Guess. If they didn't have permission, then they had to know they were playing with fire. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my top supporters in November, Eevee, Spirit Bear, Ugly Grill, Torpedon, Good Broge, Pure Magma, Eric Tams, Tech Tech Potato, The Blood Soaked Survivors, King Ares, and Kyle Seifring. You can support more Lawful Masses videos on patreon.com slash ljfrench, sponsus.com slash law, through YouTube memberships, and through Floatplane subscriptions. Join me for my weekly live production stream on twitch.tv slash lawful masses on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern U.S. time. I hope everyone has a great week. I love you all. Bye. Palette of light acid green, stone, sultry red, morning pink, and waterfall. Com what is water? What color is waterfall? And waterfall complete this fashion forward range of must have pieces.